So we seem to be making some progress here. The free charge creates an electric field. The electric field perturbs the dielectric material, creates bound charge on its surface, and the fields change from the external field, which in this case remains constant, will not always remain constant, in the gap to a somewhat reduced field inside the dielectric. Okay, Except, let's think about this. If we put the dielectric in, we get a certain amount of charge density, a certain amount of polarization based on the external field. But then, actually, the field is not in the material, the, the material experiences is not the external field. It's the internal field. The little atom, if we go back to our atom for a minute, it got perturbed, it doesn't know what's going on. Right? It doesn't know that this is an external field or internal field, or if the field's coming from its neighbors being charged or the surface, it doesn't know about bound charge. Right? All it knows is it has to find a value to reach. Right? So we have a little bit of a problem, but um, sigma b depends on E internal. And E internal depends on sigma b. So there's sort of this circular problem. We can't just keep going around in circles. So to solve it, you would need to think about the microscopic view of what's happening in great detail. Uh, but for the macroscopic picture that we're doing, the macroscopic model, you just define, cap, uh, just define the dielectric constant. The dielectric constant K, the unitless number that you can use to characterize a dielectric. And the dielectric constant will tell you it's how much it goes down. It's how much the field changes. E internal is whatever you apply externally, and it's reduced by a value K. That's what the dielectric constant is. Okay. So if you have that, then you can go back to our former equation. So we could say, in that case, then... Uh, before, what did we have? Before we had sigma free. Oh yeah, we could say that E internal, which we now know is sigma is the free charge density over K epsilon naught, right? So that's E external is sigma free over epsilon naught. We're just dividing it by um, the doctorate constant. That's equal to what? That's equal to the external field plus the, the polarization, the field the polarization creates going back. So the external field, well, that's just sigma free over epsilon naught. And then we subtracted the field due to the bound charge, which was um, sigma b over epsilon naught. And what you can do is you can flip these around to figure out what surface charge density will build up on the slab in terms of the free charge density. And you get uh, that the sigma b, the charge density that builds up, is k minus 1 over k times sigma free. Okay. So that is a little bit of an answer of what happens. And we don't get into the deep solve this circular problem. That would require a microscopic model. We just have a macroscopic model. We just say it goes down. How much? This much. Why? I don't worry about it. It goes down by that much. We measured it. Okay? That's how you do it macroscopically. So that is it for our simple one-dimensional model. We saw what happened, right? We put it in, polarization, we got some surface charge, some, the difference between bound charge and free charge, now we understand that. In this special case, outside it stayed constant, inside it went down, and we even have a way to measure how much it goes down. So that's one answer to the question of what happens when you put a dielectric in an electric field.